Good afternoon and welcome back to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, today we'll be talking about a few of our favorite things, 30 productivity tips and tricks. It's been a couple weeks since we've seen you, uh, so we're really excited to be back and um, really excited that you're able to join us here today. Our presenter for the day will be um, Volker Coco. Uh, I'm Victoria Studley, I'll be your moderator, and we're also joined by Noman Misharawala, one of our expert elites. Uh, Volker, do you want to say a couple words about yourself before we get started? Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back for those who uh, are return attendees. Uh, we missed you. And for those who are joining us for the first time, it's really great to see you here. Um, so my name is Volker Coco. I am a technical support specialist out of the Lake Oswego, Oregon office. And prior to working for Autodesk, I worked uh, for several years as a drafter and CAD manager and after a while started working for resellers as a application engineer and uh, been doing this since release 10, uh, so that would be about 1991 I think, and uh, have thoroughly enjoyed working with AutoCAD and sharing whatever knowledge I can with others and gleaning as much knowledge as I can from others. So thank you. All right, thank you, Volker. Um, I'm Victoria Studley. I'm also a technical support specialist uh, supporting AutoCAD products. I'm based in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, and I've been working in the architectural industry for a number of years um, at a series of Boston-based uh, architectural and engineering firms. Uh, Nomam, why don't you uh, say a few words about yourself and then we'll get on with the presentation. Nomam, are you there? All right, we'll move on until, uh, until he's able to get his headset working there. Okay. So before we get started, uh, a couple of housekeeping things that we usually go over. Uh, you can feel free to leave any questions that you have during the presentation in the chat window and we'll be there to answer you um, in chat or at the end if there's some time left over uh, we'll be able to answer some of your questions uh, out loud. Uh, the session will be recorded and we'll be posting it on YouTube later uh, on the Auto Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist that we've been updating throughout the year. Uh, your links will be available uh, either through the email, through your registration reminder, um, through the post-webinar survey, and we'll post them in the chat window as well. Oops. Uh, those will be links to the data set that we're using today, the script, and uh, the PowerPoint. You'll find those on our Box account. This is a series that we've been doing for a little while called the uh, Autodesk Help Webinar Series. This is the Build Your AutoCAD IQ portion of that. Uh, here are some of our um, most recent sessions that we've done, a couple of the uh, third dimension series, Materials Matter and Messing with Meshes, a couple of the Beyond the Basics, Express Tools and Attributes, and uh, one of the Back to Basics building blocks. You can find those again on, on the YouTube channel here. If you download the slide deck, you can just click right on the link here, um, or you can see it uh, right down in here. One more thing here, uh, we've got the AutoCAD Customer Council. If you're interested in helping us make AutoCAD better, uh, the development team runs a beta program through the AutoCAD Customer Council, and you'll get access to uh, the new releases and the new features that are being considered for those releases. You get to test it out and give us some feedback about what you think. So if you want to see some of your ideas put into the program to make your life a little bit easier in AutoCAD, uh, go ahead and get involved by emailing either autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.lt.council at autodesk.com, depending on which product you'd like to uh, help out with. Our Autodesk Knowledge Network uh, features articles um, that solve some of the common problems in AutoCAD and also provide you with uh, hot fixes and service packs that are available. AutoCAD 2016 Service Pack 1 was just released 
as well as a couple of hot fixes for some uh, problems that people have been encountering, including the section plane layer by object issue and the hatch intersection O snap problem. So if you have any of those issues or uh, something's not right, go ahead and install those service packs and hot fixes and hopefully that'll help you out. And as always, um, we're putting this on from product support here. And if you're having any kind of problem beyond this, uh, feel free to contact us and we'll be glad to help you out. So this week's agenda includes um, tips and tricks. Oh, wait, actually I'm gonna pause for a second and Volker has a few uh, polls. And actually, why don't I, uh, why don't you go ahead and run the polls, Volker? Do you wanna talk about them as you go? Okay. Yeah. Why don't uh, Why don't I run that? Uh, run down those polls. Uh, we've got three to begin here, and um, the first one being: Is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And typically, uh, just kind of like to see how many people have come back from pre previous webinars. How many people are new? Just uh, kind of keeping track and making sure this is worthwhile for everybody. And actually, speaking of that, we'll have a was this worth, worth your while poll at the end of the session. So we would appreciate it if you'd uh, stick around at the end and let us run that. So it looks like about 23% of you are whoops, there yep. we go. About 23% uh, of you are here for the first time, so we welcome you. We hope this will be a good experience for you and that you walk away with something. Oh, let me go ahead and run the second one. We also like to know, hey, which AutoCAD-based location do you use? So is it AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT? Is it one of the verticals? So for, architecture, MEP, is it AutoCAD maps, Civil 3D, or, or something else? And at this time, about 33% are AutoCAD LT, 33% AutoCAD, and that's split between uh, the verticals, 1% being other. I'm always kind of curious to know what that other is. So just to give you a quick view of the results. So got quite a mix of people here. Our webinars, for what it's worth, are um, they're, they're made to uh, allow you to use the stuff we show you um, in any of the AutoCAD-based applications. And sometimes, if those things are not available in AutoCAD LT, we will let you know. But for the most part, everything we show is uh, available for you to work with in AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT and any of the verticals. So our last poll for, uh, before we start the demo is, what is your preferred method for working with AutoCAD? And it looks like about, well, over 50% of you use the keyboard, which that's great. Uh, very, it's my favorite way of inputting commands. 26% use the ribbon, 13% toolbars, 3% pull downs. So quite a quite a mix. Um, I'm kind of surprised at the amount of keyboard uh, users, but I like hearing that. I like seeing that. It's very fast. Um, and the ribbon, 26%. Uh, you can't get away from it, and it's so much better than it used to be. So I actually use it uh, quite often, and there are a lot of tools available on the ribbon that you aren't going to find anywhere else. So great. Thank you very much for that. We'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and talk about the agenda real quick here, uh, Victoria. Um, so this is we call it a productivity tips and tricks session and it's designed to show you tools that'll allow you to maximize the productivity uh, to um, uh, avoid doing three things when you can do one thing to get things done uh, and we definitely want precision in our drafting 
you know, AutoCAD is precise to within 16 decimal places. So there's no reason to have overlapping line work or underlaps or things like that. So we'll be touching on uh, some functions to ensure that. Uh, but primarily, we're going to talk about some commands and functions. And when I say that, it includes system variables uh, that, hey, maybe you've forgotten them. You know, you've been around quite a while and you just, for, you know, somebody's shown you this, you used to use it, and just forgot all about it. Or, if you don't know about it, well, you know, you were never shown. So, we want to show you uh, some of the things that AutoCAD can do that are not on the surface of the application. So, hopefully, you'll walk away with something good out of this. I always enjoy showing this because there's a lot of cool stuff. Some of it, um, hey, maybe you'll never use several of these tips and tricks, uh, but if there's one or two that end up being useful and help you out in your day-to-day -day drafting, then uh, it's certainly worthwhile. So I think that's about it for the agenda this week, except we'll have a demo, obviously. I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to you then, Volker, and you can jump right in. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, Victoria, if you could let me know that you can see my AutoCAD. You're good to go. We can see your screen. All right. Thank you. Okay, so here we have AutoCAD, and again, this could be AutoCAD LT or one of the verticals. And one of the first things that I like to do is, um, and that I'll begin speaking about, is just in order to get things done, you need to be able to see things or uh, make use of the tools uh, on the ribbon or the command line. I always like to have about three or four lines of uh, text available on the command line. And since I'm going to be uh, pointing out the command line quite often, I'm going to go into options and show some of the things you can uh, maybe you aren't aware of, maybe you just don't use them. But uh, for example, I want you to be able to read the text that I'm seeing. So I've just gone into options, gone to the display tab, and selected fonts, and I'll use the default font that, that's available, but I'll go ahead and increase its size, and that way, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to see the text a little better. Um, another thing that I like to show in this dialog is that oftentimes, uh, you may want to start AutoCAD with a prototype drawing that your company uses or something that you're always going to start a new drawing with or base uh, an existing drawing that you base your new projects on. And one way to do that is to go to the template settings of the files tab. And selecting the little plus sign expands the tree branch in this window and it allows me to choose a file for my default file name uh, for QNU. What is QNU? Well, I'll tell you since you asked. This little icon right up here, this new button, this is actually QNU. And if I click on it, it prompts me to select a template. Well, by default, it's whatever uh, um, Imperial or metric, whichever one I've been using as a default uh, for my installation, whatever my language is on my uh, system. But if I want it to be something like um, ACAD named plot styles template, and I want that to always be the default, I'm going to go into options, go into files, and I'll select template settings. And then here, all I have to do is point to this, or double click on that, and then go to my folder where that template is. And in this case, I think what I'll do just to uh, pick a different um, uh, drawing 
is uh, go into where my project is right now, and we will select. Uh, and by the way, don't ever ad lib like I'm doing in front of an audience. Uh, doesn't always work. All right. Oops, I selected my sheet set template. <laughs> this is why we don't ad lib. There we go. Q new. There we go. All right. And yeah, we'll just double click on none. My apologies. Uh, for those who have been with us, this is called an awkward moment. <laughs> for those of you who are new, that's what it's called. For those who are with us, well, you know me by now. Uh, here we go. A cat named plot styles. I'll double check that. And every time I click that Q new button now, click apply, click OK, it now just opens up without prompting me. If I want to select a specific template, I can always select New, and I can get that dialog back. So just something to keep in mind. Now, while I'm here, one thing I like to do is make use of uh, Microsoft uh, programming. Uh, I may have a project folder that I work with all the time, and maybe I go back and forth between different folders, but this is my primary one. All right, uh, so. In this case here, my working folder is going to be where I have my webinar material, okay? And so I'm going to go to this one right here. There we go. Now, I always want to have this here be my home folder whenever I um, uh, start AutoCAD. It's not really going to do that. What I'm going to do is add it to my places bar. This is the places bar. So add current folder to places. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel right now. It'll prompt me to save this. And the next time I use the open command, depending on where I'm at, I can quickly switch back and forth between different projects. And you can remove these by right mouse clicking. You can add another folder. You can change the name of it and the properties. You can also just reset this list. You can add, I believe it's five additional folders to this. And some of the other ones you can delete, but not all of them. Um, I tend to use this quite often. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and open up a drawing that we'll be working with. Okay, we'll go back into options one more time here. Back in the day when I was drafting, before AutoCAD 2000 came out, um, whenever we hit enter at the command line or right mouse clicked, right mouse clicking was the same as an enter, it would repeat my last command or um, it would allow me to finish a command. Okay, With the default settings right now, whenever I use the right mouse button, it's going to give me this menu. Okay, I don't necessarily want to get rid of this because this does a lot for me. So I'm going to go into options, and what I'll do under that user preferences is select right-click customization, and I'm going to turn on time-sensitive right-click. This default value of 250 milliseconds works great for me. You may want to change it uh, for more time or less time. But I'm going to click Apply, Apply, OK. And so now, going into, say, the line command, pick my second point, I hit uh, the right mouse button real quick like, and it has finished the command. Real quick like again, and it repeats the command. Go a little bit slower on the right mouse click and I get the menu. So a um, lot of functionality there if you haven't used that. So right click customization. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some of the other tools within AutoCAD. And I'm going to open up a tool palette, which I've um, placed a bunch of commands on. We'll talk about these here a little bit later as well. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is 
just uh, this in this view here, I have a bunch of cubicles. And we're always inserting blocks, and we can use the insert from the ribbon. We can also go ahead and use the insert command, however we want to get to it. But an easy way to just select a block that is already in a drawing is to right mouse click and select Add Selected. And that takes that block and allows me to just says, okay, you want to insert that block again? There you go. Add selected. So if you haven't used that, it's a pretty cool um, tool. Now, when it comes to inserting blocks, and I'm going to repeat this command, right, so add selected, we have our base point right there, okay? That is the insertion point for that block. Well, what if I want to place this, but I want the insertion point to maybe be uh, at the back of the chair? We could redefine the block, okay, but that wouldn't be good. We could pick a spot to place this and then use the move command to move it appropriately. But reading the command line, you'll see there's an option here, base point. And by selecting this or typing B, I'll go ahead and type B. Notice how it's kind of placed the block temporarily here. And I'm going to use my shift right mouse click to select quadrant. And I'll pick the quadrant, which is the back of this chair. Zoom in a little bit. And now I can place the chair appropriately. And so that's a quick way to change the base point. Now often times I may have a need for a block that looks identical to this. And I won't say often, but it's happened. And uh, I need to have the block, but for maybe accounting purposes, I need it to be a different name. Okay? So we could certainly create a new block and then give it a different name, basically building the same block again. But there's a really easy way to do this by making, a, uh, making basically a new block of this chair. And I'm going to do this by right mouse clicking and selecting Block Editor, which takes me into the B, uh, Block Edit uh, interface. And here's a very cool thing that you're only going to find here and that is save block as. So in this case here, the block itself, I believe it's called F phone. Yes, it is. I'm going to go ahead and just call it phone and click OK. I'll close the block editor. And in the property palettes, let me go ahead and just select this block. And you'll see the block name itself is chair. Whoops. <laughs> We were working with phones. Uh, here it is. All right, so here's my phone. FN phone, but I did a chair, didn't I? I am just having awkward moments today. So let's insert a chair called a phone. <laughs> All right, so anyway, here's my chair. It's called Chair 7. Boy, that was a bad one, Victoria. All right, so cool. Chair 7. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> Got it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and uh, select phone. Yeah, there's my new phone. Uh, this is a designer phone, okay? It's made to emulate a chair. That's right. Anyway, so that's a quick way to rename an object. So I, I guess I could have called it Fred for all that anybody cares, all right? Um, although we do want to be a little more te technical than that. Um, all right, so I screwed up here, right? So we do have a command, which is not found anywhere. You have to type it in at the command line. It's called rename. I type that in, and it shows me all the objects in my drawing. So in this case here, well, I screwed up by calling that phone. So we'll go ahead and select it, 
and we'll give it a new name and we'll call it chair 22 just for grins I'll click on rename to click OK and we've now renamed that to something a little more appropriate so hopefully that helps all right so let's uh, take a look at this we can get properties here in our um, uh, of the object in our properties palette but what if we don't have it open what if we aren't like Voker, where he has this open all the time. I want to see what layer this is on. Well, one way to do that, of course, is to go to the Home tab, select the object, and see what layer it's on. That works great. But what if I'm not on the Home tab? I don't want to switch back there all the time. I want this drop down to be available regardless of what tab I'm on in the ribbon. So I'm going to right click right mouse click and add to quick access bar okay so now it's going to be available regardless of what ribbon tab I'm at so that's a good little tip to know about right there and you can add just about any command in AutoCAD to this particular quick access toolbar I just right mouse clicked, or excuse me, selected the drop down and selected more commands. Alrighty. So, one more interface item. A lot of times things get cluttered. We want to see more of the drawing area. You know, tech, typically most of us probably have more than one monitor nowadays, but I work on a laptop. And uh, when I'm not connected to other monitors, I will use a control zero to give me this clean screen or full screen mode. And that really gets rid of everything except for the drawing itself. So, control zero. Now, there are, there are other ways to get to that. There's a, a ribbon icon, there's a status bar icon for that. Um, I'm making you aware of where the, this is at, um, F1. To get to help, we'll show you where all the other locations are for that. All right. So let's take a look at um, some text items. All right. So here, uh, this is the best example I could think of. I used to work with wiring diagrams, and I'd always get very anal about text. And uh, so let's pretend this is a wiring diagram. Let's pretend it's something else. Doesn't matter. But you have aligned text here. And maybe you got this from somebody else. Maybe you didn't do this. And you need to maybe change the verbiage. Okay. So we'll call this line 100. Okay. The text looks great, but it's gone over my line work. All right, and that's, of course, because of the way it was justified. Now, I could change the justification here, and I will. I would probably want it to be a middle right justification so that when I type that uh, the text itself will always go to the left. All right, so in this case here, I've done this, and now I need to align it again uh, and it looks great but that's a lot of work I've already have existing text here so let's go ahead and just I'll just do a little bit of modification here and I'm just going to put in some uh, blurbs of text just to kind of show you where I'm going with this we have a command. It's not found on the toolbar or ribbon. It's been around, I think, since like AutoCAD 2005. And it's called the text. Justify text. And it prompts me to select my text object. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then it says, OK, what kind of justification do you want? Well, just like this one here, I want middle right. So I'll select that. 
and notice the justification, how it's changed. So now, if I take this text and make some lengthy changes to it, notice how it stays the way I want it to be. So that there is justify text. And I, if I have to clean up drawings or work with somebody else's work where I have to modify a lot of text, I, I typically tend to use this quite often. Hopefully it will come in helpful for you as well. All right. So while we're here, we'll jump tracks and let's take a look at the fillet command. Or fillet. It's pretty close to lunchtime for me, so we'll call it fillet. Here we go. By default, its value is zero. So I need to quickly place some end caps on this line work. Let's pretend it's not a wiring diagram. We'll pretend it's something else. But just by keeping the, well, it doesn't even have to be a value of zero. Okay, any value, it doesn't matter. It is going to create an end cap based on the diameter uh, of uh, the distance here, so the diameter point of a circle. So that's the fillet or fillet command, again, depending on your state of mind and how you can quickly do that. Alrighty. Having done that, let's uh, talk about dimensioning for a moment. And I'm just flying all over the place. Hey, all of these tips that I'm showing you are going to be in the script that you can download. And they're just little segments that show you how to walk through these. Uh, and um, that way you won't get left behind. Okay? Let's go ahead and switch over to this. This is your standard dimension in AutoCAD. It's just a linear dimension. And what I want to get specific about here is the arrowhead. When we go into the, and I'll do this from the ribbon, I could type D at the command line if I wanted to. When we go into this dialog here and we take a look at our, um, you know, let's go to standard, modify, we have our choice of arrowheads. And there's a few, but you're still kind of limited, right? You'll see that we have a user arrow item down here. And what I've done, is I have created a user defined arrow and in this arrow it's called plop. Okay, just I couldn't think of a good name. All right. But basically what I've done is assign that to a dimension style. That style is this style right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just select this and in my properties palette I'm going to change the arrow. Whoops, let's do it this way instead. Let's go ahead and change the dimension style. That's what I wanted to do. From standard to grooving. All right. Oh, I never assigned the arrowhead to it. Mm. Let's go into that style. Yeah, that figures. And assign my arrowhead to it. Click OK, click Close, and there we go. So I'm not an artist or anything, but by creating this arrow, I can give my drawing a, a unique look. And I know architects are going to love knowing how to do this. All right? So what I've done is in this drawing, which will be available to you, I've just put a little note here. Uh, if you want to create an arrowhead of your own, a unique one, it needs to be one unit in length. Okay? Just do it in the default AutoCAD drawing. And the insertion point should be on the right side. The block does need to exist within the current drawing. So the best thing to do is maybe add that block to your template file. Okay? Um, but then you can have your own unique little arrowhead like so hopefully that will be of use to somebody. All right, let's see. Okay, we've got time left here. So, um, and we have a lot of tips. We're not going to be able to show 30 as advertised. Um, 
we actually have closer to 50 for you, and they, like I said, they are available in the um, in the script. All right, so let's take a look right now at some drafting tools. And as we do that, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite system variables, which is also a shortcut to getting things done. So oftentimes, whenever you need to change your running OSNAPs, you would go into the OSNAP dialog, and I think it's one of these. Oops, that's object snap tracking. Ah, oh, there it is. All right. So here we can go in here, and we can change our OSNAPs. AutoCAD 2016 introduced Geometric Center. And I can change that here, which I just did. My preferences for everyday work are endpoint, midpoint, center, and node. Sometimes I need geometric center. And having said that, note where it's at right now. I'm going to type in a system variable, OS mode, and you'll see that its value is 1031. Now, I can remember that. I know that my favorite is 15. And if I go back into that OSNAP setting dialog, you'll see it's endpoint, midpoint, center, and node. I could select geometric center here, or I can quickly type OS mode and do 1039. And that gives me those OSNAP. So if there's some settings you go back and forth to all the time, then remember the OS mode system variable. And you're going, I got to go in this dialog every time to see what the numbers are? No, I'm glad you asked. You don't have to. You can just type in Osmode, and like anything else in AutoCAD, hit F1. Whoops, that should have taken us there. It didn't, so another awkward moment. I'm just going to type Osmode, and here are all the values. And basically, 1039 equals endpoint 1, midpoint 2, so that's 3. And then we have node, which um, uh, is <laughs> 3 plus 8 is 11. <laughs> um, I also have uh, center selected, so that's 15. That's my OSNAP. And then we add 1024. That gives us 1039. So sorry about the math, all right? But um, Osmo, a very quick way to do things. So having said that, with 2016, we were given the ability to find the center point of a um, uh, whoops, kind of circle. So typically, I type this stuff in. All right. So notice as I have this closed object here that it's given me a node OSNAP for the uh, centroid of this rectangle, and that's that's great. So um, whoops. Do that again. So now I've got the exact center of that. But what if you're running 2015 or even earlier? Or just for grins, and let's be destructive, I'll explode this. What if we have something like this where it's not a closed object and I want to place a point, uh, uh, something in the centroid of this? All right. Well, that's where we have object tracking. And F11 is what we use for that. And I have my midpoint OSNAP selected. I'm going to just right mouse click and select circle. And what I'll do is I'm going to reference the midpoint. And all I'm doing is hovering over this point. Okay? And that leaves a little tracking marker. And I can remove that just by hovering over it again. I'm going to go ahead and just grab that point. I'm going to grab the midpoint of this, and it allows me to place a circle based upon those points. All right, so I mean, that wasn't exact center of these two, but of these. So what I'm showing you here is how you can reference points. And if you don't have that centroid, OSNAP, you can easily do it using OTRAC 
and the appropriate OSAP, as well as Osmo. Again, these things are in the script, so um, if I went too fast, uh, well, I tend to do that at times. All right, uh, but it's there. So let me look through my list here, what else we can squeeze in. I have too many to show you, so I want to make sure I show you the right stuff. Okay. Got a bunch of stuff in this drawing, don't I? All right, so let's kind of zoom in on this view right here. I'm going to go ahead and take this, and I'm just going to erase everything. And I'll just go ahead and put in hours and hours of design work, okay? Yeah, that took hours, right? I'd be fired so quick. All right, and then I realize, uh, or the boss comes by maybe and says, hey, what you get rid of all that other stuff for? We need it. So we could undo this, right? But then what happens? All the work I just put in disappears. Now, oops, I, I really blew it. And that is how we fix this. We type in, oops. All right, if you aren't familiar with that, oops is like an undo. But it only what it does, it brings back the previous selection set of objects which were erased. This has to be done in the last, uh, uh, in the same session, and you cannot have done an undo in the meantime. Okay, so it remains in the buffer until you erase something else, or you do an undo or close AutoCAD and start it up. Obviously. So that is the oops function. Uh, again, there's no ribbon command for this. There's no um, uh, toolbar item. You have to type that in. All right, let's take a look at another command that actually needs to be typed in. So here's a wiring diagram. Uh, it was sent to me. OK, I didn't do this. I didn't screw up. No way. It was sent to me, and it's like so crooked. So I want to fix this. Now I could redraw those lines, um, I, you know, or any variation on straightening it out, right? Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my ortho, which I believe is F8. Yes, good. And that, of course, forces me to draw line work in a horizontal or vertical fashion, okay? That's not what I want to do, though. What I'm going to do is use a command it used to be around. You can add it to your menus, your ribbon, whatever. It's called change. That's right. We want to change these objects. I'm going to go ahead and select the line work. And it says, okay, do you want to change the point or the properties? Well, properties is your line weight, line color, um, etc. Uh, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to change the point. I've turned on ortho. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a point somewhere to the right of this. And the ortho forces the line work to be straight. And I've told it, hey, this is where I want you to straighten out to. And uh, that is the change command. Uh, and, and so in my drafting days, I've used this maybe twice. Okay. Uh, but, um, you know, if you don't know about it, you'll never, ever use it. And maybe you won't, but you know it's there. And you can show it to your friends, amaze your family, uh, get the dog excited, um, whatever you want to do. All right. So uh, let us take a look at some other cool functions here. So one thing I like to do is create a scratch pad out of my tool palettes. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, here I've basically added some commands to this palette, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new palette, and we'll, we'll just call it Project 1. It's the name of the project that I'm working on for another company. And that company has sent uh, me some sample work, and I need to base uh, create a new drawing based on the standards that they use. Well, 
you know, I don't know the name of their chairs or their telephone blocks or cubicle blocks or what what layer they're on. Okay, and frankly, I don't care. I don't even care about what textile they're using because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick and I'm going to uh, drag this over to my palette and it puts that chair on that palette. Right mouse clicking, it also has the layer properties of that chair. Now, obviously, this is not the layer that chair is on, but it's my current layer. Okay, uh, so in this case, I do need to change that to um, uh, whoops. Need to scroll down. Sorry about that. Color layer chairs. Okay, it's on layer chairs. All right, we're good. Colors by layer. We're good. Thought I screwed up. I didn't. I didn't mean to confuse you either, though. It has assigned a by layer color layer chairs to this object here. Um, if I select line work, okay, these are their walls, cool, all right, or their inside cubicle walls, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that. Notice it says polyline. If I go into properties here, it has this option to use a flyout. It doesn't have anything for the name, so I'm going to put uh, cubicle wall, project one, standard, Whatever, I could add more to that. But I'm going to say, hey, don't use a fly out. I want to, whoops, I do need to keep that on there for a moment. I want to use the line command. So I'm going to uncheck these here. The other options, these are all line type of objects. But I only want the line work because I'm not going to do polylines in this one here. And so having done that, I'm going to say do not use a flyout. We're using layer panels and color by layer. Click OK. So I'm just going to add those two. Just You get two different ideas of what I'm doing here. You can do the same thing with text. I'm going to switch over to a, a blank drawing here. And as I insert this block, notice how it has a color of cyan. This was a start from scratch drawing and I should have showed this initially, but it has now added chairs layer to that drawing. And if I draw a cubicle wall, again, I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing F10 on. All right. You'll see that we now have a layer in here called panels. So basically, like I said, I could care less what their standards are. I'm just going to grab this stuff, create a quick palette, and then I can draw in a uh, my own drawing or maybe maybe it has my standards. Uh, if that's the case, maybe I might want to go in here and change the properties to whatever layer that I would use in my standards. So hope that makes sense. All right, getting back to this drawing, you've seen how I quickly went from one view in the drawing to another, okay? Um, so this is, for those who aren't familiar with it, there's a command called view, okay? And um, I think it's this one. I never use these. No, that's my name views. Eh. You know, I forget where it is on the ribbon. I apologize. I type in V, okay? That gives me my view manager. And basically, these are views that I've saved in the drawing. And what a view is, is just a snapshot of the location that I'm currently in right now. You could even plot to this view. There's an option for that in the um, uh, uh, plot dialog. Yeah. And actually, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So right here, I could say, look, go ahead and plot my view cubicle. So very cool thing to know about if you haven't. But I use them a lot just to get 
around, you know, back and forth in a drawing. And what I do is I will quickly create a view. So this one here right now is called um, JText, I think it is. But I'll do something like this instead of going into the view manager, minus V. Okay, that's the shortcut, the alias for the command line version of the view command. Then I'll type save and I'll call this um, V22. I'm not sure why I picked that. doesn't matter. And now I'll go to this view here and I can quickly type minus V enter R enter V22 enter and it takes me back. So if you're in a very large drawing this could be very helpful. So I'll make this palette available to you guys as well uh, in the data set. And basically, if we take a look at the properties, all I've done is I've used a command and I've added a statement in here to cancel out of any other command and then start the view command and switch to that particular view. So you can import the palette into your AutoCAD and, and um, or not. I mean, it's up to you. I'll leave it up to you. So um, we are running short on time. I do want to take Q&A. There's a lot more stuff I'd love to show you guys. Um, I tend to talk too much. All this stuff just, you know, excites me and keeps me up all night. So um, uh, again, all this will be available to you in um, in the data set within about half an hour of the pre end of the presentation. Having said all that, let's um, before we take Q and A and everything, I do want to just run one quick poll. And um, I wish I could have shown you more. One hour goes by so quick. So, um, did you learn something new today? So we have so far two percent no, one percent no. Okay, 2% no. All right, we're moving up on the no's. Three no's. 3%, 3 I should say. No. Well, and I am sorry if you didn't. 4% um, no now. Okay, better stop that before I get 99% no. Um, here's what we have so far, and I, I do apologize if um, for wasting anybody's time if you uh, didn't learn anything, and I'm hoping that the script will um, definitely have some tips and tricks in there that uh, will make have made this worthwhile for you. So I'll turn that back over to Victoria. And um, thank you, Volker. We'll answer questions. All right. Uh, let me let me just run through the end of the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Just a couple of extra things. Um, we have some additional resources. Uh, there's a link to the Autodesk Knowledge Network community, Lynn Allen's blog, um, as well as her 2016 Tips and Tricks booklet. A link to Autodesk University 2015, which has all sorts of free classes that you can take. Um, you just need to uh, create yourself a user ID. And let's see. Oh, this one's really useful. The AutoCAD 2016 shortcut key reference. Um, I actually have one of these pinned up on my wall. It's helpful. Um, and then some Autodesk blogs. So in about a month, uh, in November, we'll be doing another session. And we've got a lot of questions about this. We actually have one in the chat window today asking about dynamic blocks. So if you join us on November 5th, we will, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll do a Beyond the Basics session, uh, another look at dynamic blocks, and hopefully answer some of the questions that you have about them there. Uh, you can visit autodesk.com slash help dash webinars to register if you're not re registered already. And if you'd like to leave feedback about the webinars, go ahead and uh, download the slide presentation and click on this uh, URL here or copy it down real quick right now. 
and we would love to hear from you. Again, this is our Autodesk Help webinar series. You can check out our landing page if you'd like to see uh, what we've got available for other products or other languages. You can leave questions after the presentation um, by going to that link there, or you can um, find that in your emailed webinar reminder. You can also leave us feedback on the current webinar, or if you have ideas for future webinars that you'd like to see done, please send us your feedback to autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Make sure that you put build your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line and it'll come right to us and we'll consider it for a future webinar. All right, now right into the questions and answers. We've got a couple of minutes here for that. So Volker, I'll turn the screen back over to you just in case you need AutoCAD. Okay, and I uh, just want to say that um, uh, we do have in our previous webinars a um, couple of other productivity tips and tricks uh, webinars. So the recordings are available on our YouTube channel as well as some on macro customization and I believe working with views, but another one on tool palettes. So some good stuff there. Did we have any questions, Victoria? Or? We, we do have a couple. Um, I'll start with one that I can answer very quickly. Uh, do we have any sessions on uh, AutoCAD MEP or Revit MEP? We don't yet, um, but if you would like to see them, send us that feedback, and we'd like to know how much interest there is um, in seeing some of the uh, ver AutoCAD verticals or other products done. Um, all right, so specifically for today's webinar, let's see. Um, can you copy views between drawings? So the saved views that you, that you had there, Volker, can you copy those between drawings? Mm. <laughs> I no, I've not tried it. I don't I don't think you can. You could import that drawing as a um, block. So I'll use the insert command to make sure to explode and it would bring those views in with it. Uh, there's no way that I can think of to copy. Yeah, the those second views. the second half of so. that uh, statement was, um, or or do you still have to program it? So it, it sounds like yes, um, but yeah. it sounds like a really good know, idea for the um, the beta. The, yeah, okay, customer yeah, that, console. Yeah. And that, or or do a little bit of customization like this, and it doesn't take much. You can just copy, copy, copy. This is nothing but views. This palette, you know, so you create a palette specific to the tools you need and make a few minor modifications or add it to your CUI if you're into customizing. Okay. How do you identify overlapping lines on top of one another? So if you've got two or three lines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a good way, easy way built right into AutoCAD to do that. Um, it is, um, uh, <laughs> got to find it here. It is selection cycling is what it's called. There it is, selection cycling. Uh, so in previous releases, you see this on this taskbar already, but with 2015, uh, it may not be a, a, enabled right off the bat. Uh, you could also type in selection cycling. So if I draw another line over this one, you know, obviously I, I can't see that it's there, okay? I would notice once I plot, because it would probably plot a little heavier, uh, but as soon as I turn on selection cycling, you'll see that little icon there, the uh, uh, cursor badge, but if I select the object, you'll see that it allows me to select between the collinear line work. So that is selection cycling, good question. All right, I'm seeing a couple of comments about um, the views in Sheet Set Manager. Um, Sheet Set Manager does enable you to use views and then copy them around um, a little easier than just working yeah. in a standalone drawing. So that, that is one option, but it's got a little bit of a learning curve yeah. to it. Uh, we do have a, a previous so, webinar on it, though, so go check it out if that's something that you're interested in. So, I mean, here I am in paper space. Um, so these type of views... I can copy easily enough. But the, the named views, uh, those I, I don't know of any way to import or copy those to another drawing. 
All right, we are at the top of the hour, so um, why don't we wrap it up and we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. Uh, go ahead, Volker. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. We really, really appreciate you guys being here. For those who really didn't get a lot out of this, um, we wish we could offer more. But for those who did, we're really glad you attended. We hope we can, you can put this to work. Uh, don't forget to download the data set. There are some good tips and tricks in there. Um, good stuff all around. We yeah. appreciate and your time. We know, it, know it's short. So. And if this was um, basic things that people were uh, looking for more advanced stuff, we do have the Beyond the Basics and the 3D webinar series as well. And we'll be picking those back up too. So come back and join us again. Indeed. Thank you, everybody. Thank have a great you. day.